Well, it's this process of spreading silver iodine aerosols into tops of clouds. Uh, scientists do this process to maximize rain and snowfall capabilities. Cloud seeding originally generated in the 1940s from an experiment at GE Labs in New York, 1946. It is most commonly done in the mountains or rangelands to increase the snowpack and summer runoff. Rangelands need it done to provide more precipitation for agricultural crops. Cloud seeding is used to weaken hurricanes and for hail mitigation. Cloud seeding works with a little water in a dry place. People are able to create ice crystals, which is what causes rainfall. They form ice crystals by seeding the atmosphere with chemicals such as silver, iodide, or dry ice. This works to create rainfall by using nucleation. The small amount of water in the air condenses around the new particles, which crystallizes to form ice. It is then delivered by plane and can cause rainfall. What is the environmental impact of cloud seeding? Cloud seeding is a very new technology, and therefore the environmental impacts of silver iodine, salts, dry ice, and other cloud seeding materials are not well known. Scientists believe that even if there is an environmental risk, the low concentration probably won't have effects. But even that is not known with certainty. Silver iodine, the most common cloud seeding material, can cause the discoloration of hands with the yellow-white film on the skin. You should remember, the reason we use this in many cases is to provide drinking water. So the chemicals they use are in the water we drink. The scary thing is the whole thing is privatized, and there is no government control over its use. It may be applied without you even knowing it. Cloud seeding directly impacts the economy by greatening rainfall and crop yield and also by reducing hail damage. The economic risks of cloud seeding are huge. You can't bet on nature or trying to control it.